So in this video, I'm going to attempt to walk through the origin of life itself. Kind of a, a, the first in two videos trying to chronicle the major events in life's history. So I'm going to show a timeline like this in both videos. Uh, BYA here means billions of years ago. So we're kind of counting back on a scale here five billion years ago from the present. Um, we're showing here maybe this is where Earth and the rest of the solar system formed, maybe about 4.6 billion years ago, according to our half-life data from meteorites. Um, and then we have very solid evidence suggesting that life definitely got started about three and a half billion years ago. We found kind of fossilized bacterial mats. Um, this is kind of a constantly changing number as scientists maybe find earlier and earlier evidence of life, but we're very sure that life formed about a billion years or so after the Earth itself formed. And at least we're also very clear that maybe there was a time where life didn't exist in Earth's history and then suddenly it did. And so it leads us to a question, how could life have gotten started? So um, this being a biology class, we're going to try to give a naturalistic answer to that uh, question. Um, but you'll see that our, our answer isn't really uh, fully complete. And so we're going to try to uh, think about the answer by thinking about these three steps. Uh, could the very basic building blocks of life have formed by themselves? We know now that, that all modern life is made of, of chemicals like proteins, nucleic acids, sugars. So could we at least have gotten the building blocks to those uh, basic uh, organic molecules all by themselves? Can we find that those building blocks combine with themselves in an um, uh, easy way to actually form some of the more complex biomolecules that actually exist inside cells? And then can we imagine all of those chemicals kind of combining together to actually make some kind of living cell? Uh, we really can't call it life until we have a, an actual cell that can reproduce itself. And so can we actually try to imagine how that might have happened? So let's kind of start um, uh, on this journey in kind of each step. Um, we'll start with this one. This is the one we actually have the most evidence for. Um, people have run very interesting simulations. Uh, the Miller-Urey experiment was the very first of these. So you can imagine this giant apparatus here. Please don't worry about all the details that are labeled in this picture. But essentially a, a sealed um, chamber, I want you to imagine. So, and, and of course they sterilized the inside of it so that there was no life inside. Because what they're really trying to simulate here are early earth conditions before life existed. Um, and they tried to fill these different chambers with all of the chemicals we think existed in that early earth conditions. Um, please don't memorize these chemicals, but I do want you to see that they have C-H-O-N, and then certainly um, Earth probably had sources of sulfur and phosphorus as well. For our purposes, all of the atoms that make up the biomolecules that are inside living cells. And so if you take these very simple chemicals and you also subject them to some energy, so maybe like lightning strikes that were frequent in early Earth, and also sources of heat, um, heat from the um, cooling magma um, inside of Earth's core, or um, there's probably frequent volcanic activity in early Earth conditions as well. So lots of heat and lightning to help chemical reactions happen. What do we find? We definitely do not find life, but we do find these very simple building blocks of life. Simple sugars, fats, amino acids that make up proteins. So at least, um, you know, getting us thinking that, all right, at least we can form the very simple building blocks of life. All right, so maybe step two, can we actually show those very simple building blocks combining together? Again, there the answer is yes. We can actually show some very simple simulations where in kind of special places, um, in watery solution, you can actually have amino acids combining with each other to form very simple, small proteins in little clay pits. You can also have um, fats, um, if you remember the phospholipids that made up the cell membrane of all living organisms now. You can put those phospholipids in a watery solution and they'll kind of self-assemble into a bilayer-like structure. So we can imagine that at least in some cases we can see some of these very simple molecules combining together to make something like the complex biomolecules that we now find inside of living creatures. 
All right, but this third step is still very tenuous, right? How do we go from all of those things to saying, hey, look, we've actually got a cell now that um, uh, can pass on its traits to offspring? That's a huge question mark that we really cannot fully account for at this time. Um, so even the simplest living um, organism now is very, very complex with lots of different types of proteins, lots a very complex genetic code, and we sort of appreciate that all life now has you know, three different systems that we would potentially have to account for. A DNA code that's copied by RNA, and then that RNA helps make proteins that do all the chemical jobs. Well, as it turns out, maybe the earliest life didn't need all three of those systems. Um, we now kind of propose that maybe the earliest life could have gotten by with just an RNA code itself. And so let's kind of talk about that to finish. Um, we sort of appreciate that even in modern organisms now, there are RNAs that are very interesting because they can sort of hold a code still. Um, they still have um, a nitrogen-based sequence that kind of holds information itself in it, um, just like DNA. Um, but these RNAs with their specific sequences can actually um, have specific 3D shapes, just like proteins did when we talked about them. And we actually find that there are still RNAs in cells today that can actually do chemistry like protein enzymes can. They can help speed up chemical reactions. And so we kind of propose, all right, well, maybe the earliest life could have um, just started with RNA because RNA can hold genetic information and do kind of chemistry for the cell all by itself. And so why do we see sort of living cells now that have all three systems? Because maybe DNA is more stable in the long term at holding a code to be passed on to offspring. And then maybe proteins exist now because they're sort of more diverse and you can kind of do more things with more different shapes with proteins than with just RNAs. All right, so we tried to account for how life might have gotten started. There are some things that we feel pretty confident about in trying to establish the hypothesis that life might have gotten started from um, very simple non-living chemicals, um, but there is a big question mark in terms of, of how we actually got to the first living organism. Uh, my final comment would be that this is not necessarily a, a weakness against evolutionary theory itself. Remember that evolution is just trying to explain how life, once it got started, changes. Um, and so this is just trying to account for the start of life itself.